And now uh, we are going to look at polynomial multiplication and uh, we will see how uh, our understanding of the Lagrange basis uh, helps us in um, improving the computational complexity of polynomial multiplication. Consider two polynomials of degree m. Their product will be a polynomial of degree uh, 2m. So, let us denote the two polynomials as a of x and b of x. Now, a of x is uh, a sub 0 plus a 1 x plus a 2 x and so on to a sub m x raised to the m and b of x is b sub 0 plus b 1 x plus b 2 x and so on up to b m x to the m. Their product c of x is a of x times b of x. The coefficients of c of x uh, can be uh, represented as the summation, I mean, so the particular coefficient c k is uh, the summation from uh, 0 to k uh, a sub i b sub k minus i and this is because uh, c sub k is the coefficient of the term x to the k and that can be achieved by uh, multiplying uh, x sub 0, I mean x to the 0 times x to the k, um, x sub 1 times x uh, to the k minus 1 and so on. And uh, the, uh, the coordinate products that we have on the uh, right hand side correspond to such uh, combinations. And this formula can be evaluated uh, in using theta of k computational steps and uh, there are a total of 2 m plus 1 coefficients for which we will need to uh, evaluate this formula. And k in the worst case can be is, is theta of k. So, the overall running time of multiplying two polynomials uh, using this formula is theta of m squared time. The question, the natural question therefore is can we uh, multiply these two polynomials uh, any faster? Can we multiply these polynomials in little o of um, m squared time? Recall that we can specify a polynomial of degree m um, by either one of two representations. The coefficient representation is essentially it's the representation of the polynomial in the monomial basis and uh, the point value representation is uh, the evaluation of the polynomial at uh, select interpolating points x sub 0, x sub 1 and so on. So, that would be the coordinates of the polynomial in the appropriate Lagrange uh, basis. Uh, the, uh, the product c of x has uh, degree uh, 2m. Um, so, if we want to ensure that uh, c of x can be fully represented in the point value representation, then we will require uh, 2m plus 1 uh, interpolating points at, uh, at which c of x is evaluated. The value of c of x at any given point z uh, is a of z times b of z. So, this naturally means that uh, when the polynomials a and b are given in point value representation, the uh, point value representation of c can be computed in time that is linear in m because if m, if a and b are um, represented using 2 m plus 1 points, uh, then uh, we simply uh, take those 2 m plus 1 um, uh, point value representation points and we multiply them uh, their, uh, the, the corresponding y values in order to get the value of uh, the polynomial c at the corresponding uh, x sub i. And this only requires uh, 2 m plus 1 multiplications. However, uh, typically a and b are given in coefficient representation and so we would uh, prefer to use uh, to, to 
manipulate and store a and b in the coefficient representation. So, if we want to take advantage of this ability to multiply two polynomials in O of m time using the Lagrange basis, we first need to translate the input from the coefficient value uh, coefficient representation to its point value representation. And we can do this simply by evaluating the polynomial at the chosen uh, points. And once we uh, perform this evaluation, we get the point value representation, uh, which is nothing but the representation of the polynomial in the uh, chosen Lagrange basis. We can then perform a polynomial multiplication in O of m time. Uh, but then after the, uh, uh, the polynomial multiplication is uh, evaluated in the Lagrange basis, we need to translate the, uh, the polynomial, I mean the value, uh, the point value representation of uh, the polynomial C, the product polynomial C back to the coefficient uh, representation. So, if we outline the steps of polynomial multiplication, here is what we have our input is coefficients of two polynomials a of x and b of x uh, both of degree m and the required output is the polynomial c uh, which is the product of a and b uh, and this c is required to be in the coefficient representation. So, our first step is to select some points x sub 0, x sub 1 and so on up to x sub d minus 1. And in order to ensure that all these polynomials are uh, do, do not, um, the, the including the product polynomial C, do not fall out of the vector space, we ensure that D is at least 2m plus 1. And uh, given these D plus 1 points, we evaluate uh, the polynomials A and B at at points x sub 0, x sub 1 and so on up to x sub d minus 1. And this will provide us with the point value representation for A and B. And once we have the point value representation, uh, computing the multiplication becomes uh, straightforward. We simply uh, multiply them uh, uh, to get C of x sub k, we simply multiply A of x sub k times b of x sub k. Okay. Uh, and once we have performed this, uh, these, these at most d multiplications, uh, we have to recover uh, c of x in the coefficient uh, representation and this will require an interpolation. Basically what we have here is uh, d uh, 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 points x sub 0, y sub 0, x sub 1, y sub 1 and so on up to uh, x sub d, y sub d, uh, these d plus 1 points at which uh, c of x has been evaluated. Now, uh, we will have to find the actual coordinate representation of uh, the polynomial c uh, to en that ensures that uh, the polynomial goes through those d plus 1 uh, points. This is nothing but polynomial interpolation. Let us actually look at an example now. Uh, consider the, um, the two polynomials 3x squared plus 2x minus 1 times 5x uh, minus 2. Uh, so, and let us um, ensure that the Lagrange basis we choose is sufficiently large to ensure uh, uh, that the uh, product uh, polynomial will also stay within this uh, vector space. Um, the uh, product polynomial is going to be of degree 3. Uh, so, we use, uh, we, we pick four points 0, 1, 2 and 3 at which, uh, based on which we define the Lagrange basis. Uh, the uh, vector representation of the two polynomials in the Lagrange basis are simply the evaluations of the two polynomials at uh, uh, x value 0, 1, 2 and 3. So, let us just uh, look at this, uh, the, the first uh, uh, term here in this Lagrange basis representation of uh, vector uh, of polynomial A. Uh, the first x value is uh, 0. 
So, when we substitute 0 here, the, this term is a 0, this term is a 0 and this term is a negative 1. Uh, so, which is why our first term here is a negative 1. Similarly, we evaluate uh, a, the polynomial a at x equal to 1 to get 4, when we evaluate it at uh, 2, we get uh, 15 and so on. So, these are the point value representations of the two polynomials and so the product uh, can be computed uh, very easily. So, minus 1 times minus 2 is 2 and that is going to be the first um, uh, coordinate of, in the, of the polynomial in the Lagrange basis. Uh, then 4 times 3 is 12 and that is the second um, uh, uh, second coordinate in uh, of the polynomial in the Lagrange basis and so on. Now, that we have this uh, polynomial represented in the Lagrange basis, uh, we need to recover the uh, uh, actual uh, polynomial in the standard basis. And if you perform this recovery, uh, we, we will notice that it evaluates to 15 x cube plus 4 x squared minus 9 x plus 2, which will be the same as the product of these two uh, polynomials, it's something that you can quickly uh, verify. So, let us now look at how good this algorithm is uh, to multiply two polynomials. Uh, the multiplication step in the Lagrange basis itself takes time that is linear in D. Uh, the, uh, however, to evaluate a polynomial at D distinct points uh, is essentially a matrix times a vector and this matrix is a D cross D uh, matrix. So, and similarly interpolating, uh, the interpolating st uh, step can also be represented as a matrix times a vector. Recall that the matrix V is a van der Mond matrix. So, the inverse exists. So, we can actually given the uh, coordinates of uh, 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 the product uh, polynomial C in the Lagrange basis, we, we can recover the coordinates of uh, the polynomial C in the standard basis simply by multiplying uh, the matrix V inverse times uh, Y. And, uh, how, but however, both these evaluation and interpolation steps in, in our algorithm will require uh, theta of D squared time. Uh, and so, this is matching the theta of d squared time that uh, the standard uh, polynomial multiplication also takes. And so, if to ensure that this approach uh, gives us some benefit, we must actually design an algorithm that runs in some little o of d squared time. So, the rest of the lecture is uh, aimed at understanding how we can achieve an algorithm to uh, using the same this pattern of uh, uh, of evaluating multiplying and interpolating back to the uh, standard basis using the same template we we will show that we can actually perform polynomial multiplication in o of d log d uh, time so our goal now is to uh, take a polynomial uh, given in coefficient representation and uh, convert it into its uh, Lagrange basis and we want to do this uh, efficiently. And if we can uh, perform this transformation efficiently, uh, the rest of the steps in polynomial multiplication are already uh, quite efficient and therefore, we will get a, uh, an improved running time for polynomial multiplication. The key observation that we can make now to uh, help us towards achieving this efficiency is that we can choose the right Lagrange basis the, that is amenable to efficient um, computation. We are not uh, require to work under work with specific um, interpolation points. We are free to choose them. 
and this freedom can be exploited to get uh, faster uh, polynomial uh, evaluation. So, let us consider the polynomial a of x. Now, this a of x can be represented uh, uh, in the following manner. We separate out the, uh, uh, the terms, uh, the even numbered uh, coefficients from the odd numbered coefficients. If you recall, a of x can be written as a 0 plus a 1 x plus a 2 x plus and so on up to uh, uh, a, uh, a m x to the m. Now, uh, we rewrite this uh, a of x as uh, two polynomials a e of x squared and a o of x squared. Now, a e of x squared is just the even numbered, uh, the, the, the terms in a of x where the coefficients have even numbers. So, a e of x would include a 0 uh, plus a 2 x squared plus a 4 x to the 4 plus a 6 x to the 6 and so on. The remaining odd number terms we uh, uh, will st will start from a 1 x to the 1. So, what we do is we find that x will be common for all odd numbered uh, uh, terms and so we remove that x and we left we will be left with um, a, a polynomial in which um, all the x terms are uh, raised to the uh, an even power and this polynomial we refer to it as a o uh, x squared. Notice that both a e and a o there uh, will not be, uh, we can be treated as polynomials in x squared, because all the terms will now be powers of x squared. Having noticed that this polynomial a of x can be uh, written in this manner, um, here is uh, uh, an attempt. Suppose we pick our Lagrange basis uh, uh, coordinates at uh, the, um, the interpolation points to be positive negative pairs. So, instead of arbitrary x 0, x 1, x 2 and so on, uh, the uh, sequence of uh, x values that uh, based on which we um, choose our Lagrange basis, let us say has this pattern where uh, there is both a plus x 0 and uh, a minus x 0. There is also a plus x 1 and the negated uh, x, negative x 1 and so on. If we were able to achieve this, then uh, let us look at um, a sub e of x i squared. This will be nothing but a sub e of negative x i the whole squared. And similar equality also holds uh, for uh, a sub o. So, if we um, continue with these positive and negatively paired um, x i values, then uh, our a of x i will can be written as uh, a e of x i squared plus x i times a o of x i uh, square. And a of negative x i can also be written as a e of x i squared. Now, this a o of x i squared will remain a o of x i squared. However, instead of x i, we must replace it with negative x i. So, we see a negative uh, term here as opposed to a positive term in the context of a x i. So, what this means to us is that um, we can evaluate a of x at uh, d points uh, if they are uh, paired using fewer uh, computational steps, because what that uh, what this means is that we will need to evaluate 
uh, for each of these pairs, we need to evaluate AE of x and AO of x, but uh, these are just at uh, d by 2 uh, points. So, that those will be x 0 squared, x 1 squared and so on up to x sub d minus uh, d by 2 minus 1 squared, because they, they are all paired. And moreover, if you look, look at these polynomials as polynomials in x squared, then their degree is only half that of the degree of a of x. So, viewed in this manner, the original problem of size d um, is now recast as two sub problems of size d by 2 and we need to put them back together. We need to do some additional O of d time work to uh, combine the two results of the sub problems uh, in order to compute the solution to the larger problem. This is if you recall very similar to uh, merge sort and many other divide and conquer algorithms and this is in fact exactly a divide and conquer uh, approach to solving this problem. Uh, and if we were able to continue this uh, in a recursive manner, we will be able to achieve a running time that can be captured by the recurrence t of d uh, equals 2 times t of d by 2 plus O of d. And uh, this is exactly the recurrence relation that uh, one would have encountered uh, trying to analyze merge sort. And as you are uh, well aware, this will evaluate to O of d times uh, log d. But the crucial requirement for this uh, to work is that we need to be able to um, maintain a plus minus uh, paired sequence of um, x i values at every level of the recursion, not just at the top level. And this is where our first attempt uh, fails. We uh, do not have this plus minus um, pairing uh, at subsequent levels. And the reason for that is um, uh, even if we enforce the plus minus at the top level, at the second level, you have polynomials a e and a o, which are essentially polynomials in x squared. And x squared is going to be a positive term and a positive value, because it is a squared value. And uh, so, the, uh, um, so we will not be able to um, use, uh, we will not be able to uh, get both positive and negative uh, terms. So, let us uh, look at a uh, pictorial um, way to see wha what the problem is. At the top level, we evaluated um, the, the polynomial at uh, these plus minus paired um, interpolation points. So, x 0 and minus x 0. Then for x 1, we had a negative x 1 and so on. And for x, uh, d by 2 minus 1, we had negative x d by 2 minus 1. And we, uh, we showed that this uh, at, at this level of the recursion, we can evaluate the polynomial uh, a of x at all of these points by um, uh, separating out the polynomial into odd and even number terms. And uh, noticing that these would lead to smaller polynomials, uh, uh, but based on um, polynomials that can be described in terms of uh, x squared. So, polynomials in x squared. Uh, so, when we at the first level of recursion, we, we have these plus minus pairs. So, we can actually, uh, if we were to get the solutions for a e of x squared and a o of x squared at the lower level of recursion, we can use the solutions to build the solution to uh, evaluations to uh, the um, top level uh, recursion. But then we cannot recurse further down, uh, because at this level, we no longer have the uh, plus minus uh, pairing. 
and so we cannot recurse further down. So, this technique uh, fails and this is a pictorial representation of why this technique uh, fails. So, the solution to this uh, um, problem is that we should uh, not insist on being in the real line, but we should allow ourselves to enter into the complex uh, realm. Um, thankfully, the um, uh, unique interpolating polynomial theorem holds even in the complex uh, plane and complex numbers have some interesting uh, structure that will allow us to uh, continue with the recursion. So, let us briefly look at what that structure is. Mm, if uh, so, suppose, uh, so our, our solution will rely on picking uh, what is called the dth complex roots of unity. There will be d such dth complex roots of unity and in the complex plane, they will be, uh, the, there will be d of them uh, in this um, uh, circle centered at the uh, origin. Uh, and so, here at the in this uh, just to give you an intuition, uh, the 16th complex roots of unity are shown on the left side and every uh, each one of them has a negative pair. So, as an example, uh, this uh, complex number here has um, it can be paired with its uh, negation which is over here and therefore, both of them are in the dth uh, set of all dth I mean the 16th complex roots of unity. So, we have the pairing and let us, uh, so when we squ square these uh, 16th complex roots of unity, we will get 8th uh, complex roots of unity. And interestingly, the eighth complex roots of unity will continue to be plus minus paired. So, this is a, uh, an, a one of the um, eighth complex roots of unity uh, and its negation is also another eighth complex root of unity. And this is exactly uh, the kind of structure we want. We want to evaluate the polynomial at uh, some uh, dth um, comp uh, using uh, complex numbers uh, that are the dth complex roots of unity, they will be plus minus paired uh, and then uh, when we uh, divide and uh, them into sub problems, we will need to um, square these uh, interpolation points and when we square them in, in you will notice that you are um, at d by 2 th complex roots of unity and uh, they will remain plus minus uh, paired. And this uh, eighth uh, shown here is the eighth complex roots of unity that are plus minus paired. If you continue to square it, we will get the fourth complex roots of unity which will only be these four terms uh, plus 1, minus 1, plus i and uh, negative i and again they will be plus minus paired and uh, this pattern will continue on. And uh, so, this is exactly what the kind of pattern we need to complete our divide and conquer recursive uh, formulation. And so, um, since this uh, uh, divide and conquer uh, rests heavily on a good understanding of complex numbers, we will take a, a small detour and uh, recap uh, complex numbers uh, more carefully uh, uh, before we proceed with the divide and conquer uh, formulation of the fast Fourier transform algorithm. Let us now quickly recall uh, some fundamental aspects of uh, complex numbers. In particular, we will be focusing on the complex dth roots of unity, uh, which play a crucial role in our context. So, the complex dth roots of unity are the d complex solutions to the equation z to the d equal to 1. 
Now, these uh, roots of unity uh, can be written uh, in the sequence uh, 1 omega, omega squared and so on up to omega raised to the d minus 1. Here, uh, omega uh, can be written as 2 pi i by d and it is called the principal dth root of unity. And here, uh, i is the square root of negative 1, it is the imaginary uh, unit. The uh, dth uh, roots of unity uh, can also be uh, represented. Now, uh, notice that the dth roots of unity start at omega 1, which is essentially omega raised to the 0, then omega, then omega squared and then omega cubed and so on. Now, if we uh, apply the formula that omega is equal to 2 pi i by d to other uh, dth roots of unity, then we can generalize it to uh, the, the, the entire set of dth roots of unity to e to the 2 pi i k by d and here k goes from 0. Now, if, z, if it is uh, 0, the term will evaluate to a 1. Uh, k when k is equal to 1, it, it will evaluate it to e to the 2 pi i by d, which is nothing but omega and so on. But now, we can take advantage of Euler's uh, formula and so we can write the um, uh, dth roots of unity uh, in its generalized form as the cosine of 2 pi k by d plus i times sine 2 pi k by d. And this is in a form that we usually uh, see complex numbers in. So, we typically would uh, uh, represent a complex number as, as say z as being equal to a plus uh, b times i, where i is the square root of uh, negative 1. And uh, the best way we can visualize uh, this complex number is in the complex plane. Uh, where the real part is uh, represented by the uh, x axis and the imaginary part is represented by the y axis. And, uh, the, uh, and so, to represent the number uh, z equal to a plus b times i, we will uh, mark it out as the coordinate a comma, as the, as the point a comma b. And this z can be rewritten as r times cosine of theta plus i uh, sin uh, theta, uh, which uh, is applying Euler's formula is nothing but r times uh, e to the i uh, theta. Here r is the uh, magnitude of the uh, complex number given by the square root of a squared plus uh, b squared and the angle uh, is, some, is, an, is an angle that lies between 0 and 2 pi uh, radians. The solution to the equation uh, z to the d equal to 1, if you recall they, these are the um, uh, complex dth roots of unity will be of the form uh, 1 comma theta in this uh, polar coordinates form. Um, and the theta will be in multiples of uh, 2 pi d. Uh, and the uh, example, uh, the figure shown to the right represents the 16th roots of unity. Uh, so, it starts with uh, 1, which is on the x axis. Then omega is the first or what we, if you recall, we called it the principal dth root of unity. Omega will be at uh, at an angle 2 pi divided by d uh, and uh, the next omega squared is going to be at an angle 4 pi divided by d um, and so on. In order to uh, employ these dth complex roots of unity in our uh, in our context of evaluating uh, a polynomial, we will be taking advantage of two important properties. And uh, we have already alluded to these two properties uh, pictorially uh, in order to show how the divide and conquer can potentially be um, extended in a recursive manner uh, 
whereas the previous attempt using just numbers from the real uh, line uh, failed. Uh, so, the first property states that if d is even, then the dth roots of unity are plus minus uh, paired. So, if you um, uh, take the um, take omega raised to the d by 2 plus j, uh, it is going to be the negation of omega raised to the j. So, let us actually look at an example to see uh, to, to illustrate this. So, here um, if you look at uh, this um, 16th complex root of unity, it is going to be uh, omega uh, d by 2 plus 1. Uh, that is th that's this representation and that is going to be the negation of omega raised to the 1 and this is this is and this is going to be true for uh, all of these. So, if you take uh, this uh, uh, dth root of unity, it is negation is going to be of uh, it is going to be the negation of this uh, dth root of unity and uh, this uh, the first property says that um, uh, all of these uh, uh, dth roots of unity uh, here uh, at the bottom are uh, paired with a negation um, of the dth roots of unity on top. And the second property, this, this the first property gives us this uh, plus minus pairing, which will allow us to uh, use uh, to, to separate the odd and even terms in our polynomial and evaluate them and combine their results to evaluate the, uh, the, the larger polynomial. But in order to recursively uh, continue in this manner, we will need to ensure uh, that uh, the, um, uh, the, the plus minus uh, uh, the, that the uh, that we uh, again get the plus minus pairing even after we square and property 2 helps us establish this requirement. Um, so, when d is even, um, let us consider the square of each of the complex dth roots of unity. So, you will have d such complex root, uh, dth roots of unity. If you square each one of them, you will achieve, uh, you will essentially obtain the set of uh, d by 2 th complex uh, roots of unity. There is going to be d by 2 of them. Uh, so, let us look at uh, a picture to illustrate uh, this point. So, here on the left hand side, we have uh, the 16th complex roots of unity and we have uh, a total of uh, 16 such complex roots of unity starting at 1 uh, uh, omega, omega squared and so on up to omega raised to the 15. If we square uh, these um, uh, complex roots of unity, we will uh, end up with the 8th complex roots of unity and there is going to be 8 of them. Uh, and why uh, why do we not get 16? Well, if you square the the uh, this omega here, you go, we are going to get this complex uh, uh, root of unity. Likewise, the negation of it also, when squared, will lead to uh, uh, this particular uh, eighth complex root of unity. So, uh, every plus minus paired um, uh, complex 16th root of unity when squared will result in the same 8th complex root of unity. And uh, so, this is exactly what we want uh, because now we have half the number of uh, complex roots of unity uh, and they continue to be plus minus uh, paired. So, this complex 8th uh, root of unity is the is a negation of this 
complex uh, eighth root of unity and this is the negation of this complex eighth root of unity and this is the negation of this complex eighth root of unity and so on.